one of the surprise teams a year ago with a 10-win season, Red Oak attempts to build on its success. Backside pressure, he's hit, the ball comes loose. Scramble for it, the Hawks say they have it at the 21. He was getting ready to throw it, he got hit backside and the ball popped out. And Red Oak has recovered the football. Season predictions after a 3 7 season in 2006, the Hawks seemed to be a few years away from being a contender in a very tough District 15 4A. The Hawks were predicted to finish seventh. first district game win since 2003 came with a hard-fought victory over Lancaster 14 to 7. The Hawks down Arlington Seguin 21 to 14 to go 3-1 in district play. What a beautiful 38-yard pass from Kevin Pruitt to Seth rushing right on the money. The Hawks' first win over the Ennis Lions since 1992 came on homecoming night in Ennis, 24-12. The Hawks closed out district play with a 35-34 win over Corsicana to finish the regular season 8-2, 5-1 in district. time since 1984, first time ever as a 4A school, now trying to pick up that first ever playoff win as a 4A school. 
The Hawks' first playoff appearance in 24 years came on Friday, November 16th at Lumpkin Stadium in Waxahachie. Long touchdown pass to McCullers. A bubble return for a touchdown by McCullers. 14 to nothing. The Hawks have the leader. They're on the move again. Third time that we've seen the Hawks, and believe you me, they have gotten better each week. We saw them the first game about the middle of the season, and now in the first game of the playoffs, they are a much better football team today than they've been at any point in the year. A packed home side of screaming fans see the Hawks jump to a quick lead and hold on to win the first playoff game since 1968. With the snap, adds it off, and McCuller looking for room, and he's still fighting and breaking, and breaks into the open at the 45, makes it out to the 48. I lost him for a second. Ball comes loose and picked up by the Hawks. Richardson on the run to the 20, the 10, into the end zone for the touchdown. I, I thought maybe that Hubert was down before that ball came loose, but there was no signal, and it was just scooped up. Good. With the snap, hands it off to Boyd. Boyd up the middle, he breaks, he's gone! To the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. They followed him up all night long, and all of a sudden, Mick Boyd goes 60 yards for the nail in the coffin. Is there a better back in the District 15 4A <laughs> than Mick Boyd? have won it at Stuart Lumpkins Memorial Stadium, 35-21. The Hawks captured the area championship with a dominating 40-24 win over Dallas Spruce High School at Middle Lothian Stadium. What when Michael Carter grabs you? You have been grabbed. You have been grabbed. <laughs> Direct snap to Nick Boyd. Up the middle, Boyd has room to the 20, 15, 10, breaking tackles to the 5, he gets into the end zone, touchdown. Playoff game at Texas Stadium shut down local restaurants and many other businesses as Red Oak fans filled the visitor side of Texas Stadium with what stadium officials say was the largest playoff crowd of the season. It is amazing how many people are at this game, especially for Red Oak. Oh yeah, Texas Stadium was, I mean, 
It's, it's Texas Stadium. It's where Tom Landry coached, where Troy Aitman played, where Roger Staubach dodged everybody. It's just, it's just got a bunch of history. And it's just walking on that field is just exciting. Mo back on the Hawks side. The fans into it. What an atmosphere. It's electric right now at Texas Stadium. It was a real great feeling having all those people at Texas Stadium and all those games watching the play. Tight end in the formation, direct snap. Rushing, turns it up to the 30, breaks the tackle to the outside to the 40. 45 50. Cuts back again and gets tackled at the 45 yard line. Direct snap to Boyd. Pruitt leading the way, gets a good block to the 15, 10, 5. Big Boyd will score. Whew. I mean, I think we had the whole, whole all the Red Oak out there. The whole side was full as far as I saw. I didn't see an empty seat. No one was sitting down. Everyone was up and yelling, banging on drums, blowing bullhorns, uh, everything. It was, it was amazing. Throws it back over to Boyd. He has some blockers to the 40, 35, 30. Flag comes down, though, as Boyd makes it to the 20, but I'm afraid the Hawks are going to get called for holding. You know, who would have thought last year, and, and I'm going to even use Taylor McCullough as an example, that, that Red Oak football would end at, at Texas Stadium, that he would be selected for the All-Star game, be able to play in the Alamo Dome uh, at the Coach's High School All-Star game, and that we would be playing at SMU the first game of this year. You know, I mean, it's just been a 180 degree turnaround. And like I said, it's, it's great for the kids and, and they're excited about it. And, uh, and you gotta get used to things like that. You know, if you expect to be in the playoffs, you gotta get used to playing in stadiums like that. You gotta get used to playing on Saturday. The sounds of pads against pads once again filled Billy Goodloe Stadium. It may not have been time for the new season, but spring football is one of the players' most important steps on their way to what they hope will be a repeat of last season's success. The best thing is the expectations and, and the kids not believing and knowing now, hey, we can win, we can make the playoffs, we can go deep in the playoffs. Uh, but, but the coach comes out of me and, you know, as soon as last season's over, you start worrying about the next season. You start thinking, well, who's going to replace this guy? Who's going to replace this guy that graduated? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? So, it, sure, we, we have enjoyed it, but then, you know, it's time to get back to work and you start worrying again and everything. But it has been fun, and it, it, most definitely for the kids. I enjoyed seeing, uh, you know, their expectations rise and, and their excitement and, and being able to make the playoffs, and you see that this year with them. Uh, we're going to be a little bit bigger if you can believe that's possible even though we lost Carter we got the um, big guys Preston and Sleepy they've gained a little bit of weight and gotten stronger and we got a small guy at nose guard that's quick Manning so we're going to be a real competitive this year because we're going to be able to do a few things inside that we couldn't do last year. I know it's Thursday you're tired it's heavy leg it's a little humid suck it up we don't ever feel sorry for ourselves you play hard, you go as fast as you can go. If that's as fast as we can go, we need to do some extra conditions. We're not in shape to play a four quarter football game yet. So pick your intensity level up. Let's go. Here we go. Come on. Let's, let's. You play harder than that. Hit. Good, good. Angle left and punch. Angle left and punch. 125. 125. You got number 15 here. I mean, anywhere I go, people ask how we're going to do. You know, you got big shoes to fill, and we got big hopes for this season. You know, last season, it was all, our motto was leave a trail, because this has never been done before in Red Oak, and uh, there's never been any kind of, you know, success in recent Red Oak history, and so our whole thing was going out there and proving everybody wrong and saying that we can do it. And this year, it feels even tougher, because now, Okay, we proved everyone. We left the trail, but now we got to build on it. 
and we gotta, you know, make that trail even bigger. And so our motto this year is all in, which means that the whole team has to be all in or else, you know, we're gonna perish. But if we're all together, like I feel, you know, we are, then great things are gonna happen. Last season was obviously just great. I mean, that had never happened in Red Oak before, and it's just great that I could be a part of that. And uh, that just make this, me, me wanna go back this season, just, just make it 10 times better. This is my senior season, just wanna go out with a bang. Yeah, we've got, we've got a tough, tougher schedule this year, starting off at Highland Park and Lake Dallas, but I think we're going to be ready. Our coach is going to have us ready in positions where we can do good on the field and come out on top on the scoreboard. We know that our schedule is tougher this year. I mean, we're playing Highland Park, who's number one in the, in the area. Uh, White House was a playoff team. Obviously, Lake Dallas was a playoff team. So three out of the first four are tough. And then we open district with probably the two toughest teams in district, Lancaster and West Mesquite. So these first uh, six games are going to be real tough on us. And, uh, and we're just going to have to keep playing. We're going to have to get better each week so that, you know, like I said, in the end, our expectations are to make the playoffs. Uh, our kids, they're going to play four quarters. They'll be out. They'll give it everything they've got. You know, right now they don't have that sense that, yeah, we can't, we can't be beat, but they, they have a little bit of it growing. And as we progress through the year, hopefully that feeling grows and grows and we get on a run like we did last year. You know, we've got Nick Boyd coming back, and we got Seth Run Rushing coming back. And you add Ishmael Harrison, Alex McGraw to that, we got a good running program. But what that should open up is our passing game. And, uh, you know, Grady Latimer has done good through the spring, through seven on seven. Receivers Jordan Stanford, Cody Thompson have really stepped up. So, so we think our passing game has improved from last year. And it, hopefully teams are going to come in thinking they got to stop the running game which will open up the passing game. You know, we, we feel our defensive front is our strong point. Chris Ellison, Preston Sanders, and Chris Manning give us a good front, and I'm looking for them to have a good year this year, and, and they need to to help us. Uh, Linebacker-wise, we got guys coming back, Daniel Claiborne and Seth Rushing, their linebacker. We're asking some guys to step up in the middle as inside linebackers. That's Cody Monette, Austin Meter, and Mandel Dixon. Uh, that's two sophomores and a junior. So, you know, you're asking them to step up, grow up real quick, and then throwing them into a Highland Park game is, is, is tough, but they got to do it, and we know they can. You know, you're, you're going to see a lot of the same defense, but a, but a little bit different. Offensively, you know, we're the same offense. Coach Waddle is still here as offensive coordinator. We've got two new receiver coaches, uh, both Coach Wallace's. And, uh, and they're doing a good job. And, uh, you know, you, once again, you're going to see a lot of running out of the spread, uh, maybe with a few more, few different plays, maybe a little option in there. Oh, yeah, we're definitely on track. There's a lot of guys here that have their mindset. A bunch of the singers, have, they have their mindset. We want to be just, just as good or even better as last year. We're ready to win. We're going to come out there on fire and ready to hit someone. Well, is, I played left guard last year. And uh, I played it, you know, with the four seniors other than line. I was the only junior. And then uh, come spring ball, uh, they decided uh, they tried to move me to left tackle. Uh, but then uh, they felt that I'd be even more valuable at the center position. So they moved me to center, and it's been it's been interesting. Coach gave me film, uh, I guess Friday last week, and. I spent every night till about three o'clock in the morning just studying it, and I've studied it. And I, I mean, this year I only have five classes, and we've gone to the eight period. So right when football's over, I go get something to eat, like Subway or something. I come back here and I'll just watch film for three hours every day, and then I go home and just watch nothing but film. Hustle more. You know, even if I'm not like if the play's not direct to me, I want to be if I'm backside player, I still want to work my butt off, just be able to make that extra block or get there faster. You know, get up there, help out the play best I can. I was working out every day, out here running in the heat, lifting weights, getting prepared, doing drills, going to camps to be ready for the season. It's been okay, you know. Sure, some days it's been bad, but we've been fighting the rain more than we have the heat, you know, and staying off the field because of lightning and all that, missing practice. But when those clouds roll in, it helps out a lot. We try to preach to them. You know, hey, get get hydrated. You know, I mean, you got to start now. You can't wait till we're out there at practice. And at 5:30, you start feeling bad, and you think you can drink all this water. You can't do it. You got to do it at eight in the morning, 
till four o'clock and then we're out there. So, you know, we try to we try to have Gatorade for them in between practices. You know, we come in here, cool off a little bit, and then we go back out. Uh, but, you know, just the preaching part of, of getting hydrated, and, and they've adjusted to it well. It's been hot. We kind of go take advantage of those water breaks, too, as it goes on. Right, the rain's fun, I'm not going to lie, but it, it cuts out on our practice time. When it lightens, we got to come in here, and that's a big bummer. From being a lineman, you know, it's all about we set the tempo. You know, in practice, we have to be the ones who has to, you know, push everybody else. Because if we're, if we're playing good and we're playing, you know, like fast, and quick and accurate, then it builds everybody else up, and you can see that transition as you know. Oh, the line's doing pretty good. Well, let's let's keep going, and it builds up, and we end up having a good practice. You know, our coach staff is great this year. Coach Shields again, he's coming back. He's a he's a head, he's not one of those coaches that'll yell at you. He's one of those coaches that expects you to do well. If you don't do well, you know you feel bad because you didn't you let him down. And Coach Waddle, he's one of my by far the best offensive coordinator I've ever had. I mean, he's a genius when it comes to making up plays. I know he's, he's got a great scheme for us in Highland Park. And Coach Hollywood coming up for uh, our defensive coordinator, he brings a lot of energy to our team that we need this year big time. We have the best coaching staff in the state right here. Our coaches come out, they work hard every day. They're up here. I don't think they're taking a day off in months. I mean, I quit after my freshman year, and Coach Thompson didn't know me or anything. And he came out and taught me back into playing, and I came back and... I've dropped everything and just been completely committed to football. And then Coach Waddle has put a lot of faith in me. I mean, we, we're throwing the ball more this year, and I feel like Coach Waddle has a lot of respect for me. It's an amazing feeling. You know, we went in thinking that, that hey, Joshua, this is one of their best teams in a long time, too. They've kind of been like Red Oak. And that coach told me, Coach Schaefer said, he said, hey, coach, this is one the best team I've had here at Joshua, which was good to know because, I mean, you know, once again, the days of playing, you know, some weak sister teams are, are off of Red Oak's schedule. So we wanted to have a test. First time you hit somebody else besides a teammate. Remember what I told y'all that day on the field? At the end of the night, if somebody's getting back on, ready to get on their bus, or we're working in that locker room, somebody's going to be feeling real good about their season, and somebody's going to be saying, oh crap, man, what are we going to do this year? You got to make your mind up what side you want to be on. Are you going to be up here at the end of the night, or are you going to be going, oh crap, man, what's going to happen to us next week? Let's go. Right now, you got to treat this like this right now at the Ford Stadium, all right? Yes, sir. I understand that. Yes, sir. You know, we, we got beat a couple times in the secondary, which we got to we got to tighten up, especially with Highland Park. But we think we have this week, and uh, it's going to be a good challenge. Right, you go hit somebody else. You okay. wrap up, you play to the whistle, and you play hard. Let's go. Get off this field. Does everybody understand? Yes, yes, sir. Red Oak football does it now. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us Maybe a jumping off sides, you know, things that you got to get corrected there. But we really didn't feel that they stopped us. We felt that we stopped ourselves. Cubby left. Okay. Cubby left. 125 zone. Oh, sorry. Cubby left 25 zone. Check 125 Mustang. Hey, Stallion, Stallion. Hey, I know you're trying to throw it over people's hands. Don't float it. I know. I know. Caught him off guard. So once again, we feel like our offense is a strong part, and sometimes the best defense is a good offense. You know, hold the ball, keep it away from the other team. Not bad first time out, but I'm going to tell you guys, we got to learn to play tired. As soon as we got tired, we messed up an ET base and a trap. Those, those shouldn't be a problem.
Yes, sir. So we got to get underneath our guys on zone, right? So, let's go. We got to be able to pound the rock. We're not showing much, but this is our base stuff here. We got to be able to execute. Good job on the passing game. If you touch it, receivers, you catch it. Don't not tip a ball up. Everybody understand that. So go up and get it. Sacrifice your body. You hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Good job. First time out. I really am. It ain't bad. Okay. Get you a good drink. We got to go out of football. Right, stay focused. The Hawks, coming off a great season in 2007, made the decision to fear no one as they took on the number one ranked Highland Park Scots in the prestigious Tom Landry Classic at SMU. And being at SMU Stadium, that's just, it's a college stadium, and that's just like, that's the next step for me. They to come off the ball, right? Feeling good, Pete? Fire up, coach! You look like you're running good. Good. There you go, baby. Come on, baby. Let's go. We need you. We need you. Let's go. Let's go, Pace. Come on, big Casey. You know, we, we thought, hey, this would be great for our kids. You know, we, we're, we get to see a program like Highland Park that we're striving to be like. We get to go to a good field like SMU. Uh, we get to play on Saturday. That's kind of a spotlight game. You know, and it, it, like I said, it, it's a good opportunity for the kids. Well, obviously, they have a, a tradition of winning, and we're trying to build on that tradition, or our, our own tradition. We're started trying to start our own tradition of winning. And, you know, they're going to be good. They're going to make plays, and we're going to make plays. You know, it's definitely not going to be an easy game by any means. You will not see us go up there and win 50 to 0. That's not, that's not going to happen. It's not realistic. But you're not going to see Highland Park beat us 50 to 0 either. We are a very good football team, and we're going to give them everything we got, and it's going to be a good game. We usually take 45, a good 45 minutes to warm up. Well, since we have that previous game before us, South Lake and Plano West, they're only giving us about 25 minutes to warm up. So you adjust your schedule a little bit, but it's good, once again, if we get there in the playoffs, we've been there before. Again! Let's go, guys, let's go. We got to go out first. We're the visiting team, so get in the tunnel. We go first, okay? Get in our tunnel and go ahead and come out. Sir. Captains, we win the toss, we'll take the ball, okay? Everybody understand that. We'll take the ball. Who are the name? That will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread. Just if you don't have chill bumps to that, all right, then we're not alive. We need to check our pulse. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. All right, there's three things that you know with this program. If you've been with this program, there's three things that you know. Number one, we're going to play hard for four quarters, okay? 
When you do play hard for four quarters, good things happen to you. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Understand this is a football game. Good and bad things are going to happen. Second thing, no matter how much time left on the clock, no matter if we're 78 yards away from end zone, all right, we're not out of the game. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. I know that, okay? And the last thing, if 47 guys are shooting for the same goal and don't care who gets the credit, okay, 13 coaches are doing the same thing, and the whole training staff, you can't be beat, okay? Yes, sir. Right. Over 60 people shooting from the same goal cannot be beat, okay? Yes, sir. It's right. powerful when you walk down this step, and let's go get their cut. Yeah. Choice. Wonderful. You want to defer, okay? What choice? He's going to get his choice in the second half. He's deferred, it's going to be his choice in the second half. Okay, that's what he wants to do. Uh, I'm going to defend this one. Okay, so uh, you want to kick to the clock? Okay, Baxter, go here, Blue. Over here. 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 Over He's got Nick Boyd just to his right. He's got four wide receivers in the pattern. They're going to give it to Boyd going over the right side, and he'll grind out about three yards. Nick Boyd, first carry of the game. At 1,600 yards and 19 touchdowns. Scott scored first, but the Hawks had an answer as quarterback Grady Latimer hit wide receiver Cody Thompson for an outstanding 27-yard touchdown pass. Highland Park would score again before the end of the first quarter and led 13-7. The second quarter was all Highland Park as they outscored the Hawks 18-7 to take a 31-14 lead. The highlight in the second quarter for the Hawks was an awesome 85-yard touchdown run by senior Seth Rushing, who blew through the line and outran the Scots to the end zone. Move the ball back to the 15-yard line. They're going to stab it back to the quarterback. He steps around one, goes straight up the middle, and he's going to go all the way. Touchdown, that's Seth Rushing. They direct snap to Seth Rushing in the backfield, and he went straight up the middle. Highland Park had everybody up tight, and he goes 85 yards for the touchdown. Seth Rushing.
we, we emphasize to them, hey, we're going to play hard for four quarters. And, and we emphasize that every game. Uh, you know, I don't care what the score is. I don't care if we're up by 14, we're down by 14, whatever. We're going to play hard for four quarters. Here's what I, what I expect. I expect to us, to, it's going to be a hard fought game. It's going to be one, probably a high scoring game. I mean, it, even good defenses try to, it's hard for them to slow Highland Park down. Let me put it that way. But I think our offense can do the same thing to them. So I, I believe it's going to be a, I don't want to say attract me, but it's going to be up and down the field and everything. And we hope in the fourth quarter, give us one shot and we'll take our chances and hopefully we come out a win. We're going to have to run the Reds. We'll run the Reds. McGraw, you're going to come down even versus Covey. Run it. We have got to bring some pressure. You cannot be outside number three when you do that. Okay, Seth? Granson, Sergio, you're going to abandon some too. Which one, like I said on the field, which one's going to get to the end zone quicker? The receiver, not the quarterback. He wants it, and he's staring at the guy. He's staring hard at him. You stay stride to stride. Player stick, he runs, sticks his hands up. That's when you stick your hand there and knock it down. What's the score? 31? Take three touchdowns off that board, and what is it? It's low, isn't it? We're talking about, we're talking about a close ball game. Do what you've been coached to do. I'm not disappointed in you. We can get these guys. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. We can get these guys. You got to believe that. You can do it. When we, two or more guys tackle them, we want the ball. Strip it. Get the ball out of there. Put your fingers on his. Pry him off and get the ball out. Everybody with me? Yes, yes sir. sir. You can do it, fellas. I'm telling you, you can do it. We're okay. On the line, tackles widen us out like we do on Veer. Okay, we've been doing that on Veer. We wired down go. enough. On the midline, let's widen them out a little bit more. Wide. It's always going to be quarterback. We've got to have the back come and take the four eye. If you know your point of GT base tackles, you can scoot in a little bit. You win this half, you'll give yourself a chance in the fourth quarter to win the game. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. That's all we ask for, is a chance to win the fourth quarter, all right? Yes, sir. Play hard for four quarters. See what kind of teammates we are. Let's come back in this thing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. After a 31-yard Highland Park field goal, the Hawks would once again connect on a 34-yard touchdown pass from Grady Latimer to Seth Rushing. The Hawks would end the scoring in the fourth quarter as Rushing would once again be on the end of a nice touchdown, this time from junior quarterback Travis Wallace. While the Hawks did not take the victory, they served notice that they would face anyone and would fight to the end. Tom Landry Classic organizer spoke to the team after the game and told them they were honored to have the hard-working Hawks team in the Landry Classic. And also announced and presented senior Seth Rushing with the media selection of offensive player of the game. Rushing ended the night with 94 yards on only three carries and four catches for 125 yards, scoring three of the Hawks' touchdowns. The final score read 45 to 26, but more importantly, the Hawks learn what it will take to face a tough schedule ahead. Hawks fans can be sure that Coach Shields and the coaching staff, along with our Hawks, will be back to take on all teams in a season that will surely be a season of champions. 
Well, now I know they come out and they actually practice it when they play Red Oak. They don't see Red Oak on their schedule and say, oh, we've got a bye week and we can relax this week. They come out and they say, well, we've got Red Oak, we better play because they're going to come out and play four quarters and they're going to bust us in the mouth. We're going to take what we did wrong here and learn from it. And that's what you got to do each week that we preach to them. we got to get a little bit better each week. And, you know, playing a, a traditional powerhouse like that the first week, you know, exposes you a little bit of, of what we need to work on. And uh, we'll figure it out Monday and try to get a little bit better each week.